Okay, now we move on the on the next uh, presentations. Prof. Misri Gozan uh, from Indonesian Accreditation Board of for Engineering Education. Mr. Gozan is a professor from uh, University of Indonesia. Uh, okay, Mr. Gozan, the tie the floor is yours. Uh, is it? Okay. Is my sound clear or my voice clear or also you can yes, see clear. my presentation? Okay. Yeah, clear. Okay. Thank you. Uh, thank you very much, Mr. Mor Professor Isradi, for your nice uh, introduction. And I would like, with this uh, opportunity, I would like also to thank many, uh, many distinguished uh, speakers and also uh, for, for attending this uh this uh, conference is symposium and i would like to uh just, just set my okay okay uh i changed a little bit the, the title uh mr moderator because i think it's it's uh it's better to to exp to explain or to express uh, how we try to close uh, the gap between the engineers and education uh, and this is a lesson learned uh, from EAB PII. And I'm uh, speaking on behalf of the EAB in this workshop. So uh, firstly, I would like to introduce uh, Indonesia. Uh, we have still 160 million people. And this uh, very nice archipelagos in East, uh, the, the, the tro tropical countries. And from the Sabang, uh, from the Aceh, from the, uh, the, the most east part of Indonesia until the Papua. And we have around uh, 17, more than 17,000 islands. And this, those are big islands and small islands. And it's with, with, although there are more uh, waters in our country, but we still have uh, what, uh, around 2,000 million kilometer uh, square. Uh, that, uh, and with this uh, condition, around 2.7 million enrollment uh, per year in Indonesia. That's, this is the number of all, uh, not only bachelor degree. So uh, now we go to the undergraduate engineering problem. Sorry, is that is there very the noise in my presentation? Because I, in my neighbor there is a renovation. So. I hope not uh, disturbing very much. And uh, some uh, the, the, this engineering programs. There are about five thousand engineering pro engineering uh, programs. These are including uh, the the bachelor degree and vocational at, uh, and also postgraduates, etc. So this number is uh, this is a uh, this is a common number. I mean, we share this number with the education, and also almost the same with the, soci the sociology. Uh, programs in Indonesia. So uh, with this number, uh, we, we are expecting 5% uh, go to uh, EIB international accreditation. So, and how are the number of the students? We have around 1 million uh, engineering students, uh, the, stu uh, the, the student, student body of this, this engineering. So, okay. So I'm going to go to the engineering part now. Uh, what we are as engineers good at is uh, very well described by this uh, cartoon from the Fighting Darwin blogspot I took, uh, which uh, this is between the psychology and, uh, and the engineering person. <laughs> he said that I have uncontrollable urge to show people better ways to do things. So, with this uh, very good attitude, actually, uh, we uh, have uh, we have the good attitude to to have continuous improvement in our uh, education, and it's not only in education basically, but also in shaping uh, the industrial revolutions. So basically, engineers have done a lot and have uh, very good roles, uh, big roles in shaping industrial revolution. So why don't we? also do this for our edu uh, uh, education, engineering education system. So uh, we have 
previously in about 1994 uh, our educa our uh, our accreditation system in Indonesia but before that uh, but uh, before that we don't have it but until 2012 uh, our government realized that the accreditation of study program should be carried out by autonomous accreditation body formed by the society. So by this first, uh, allows professional society to enter the room of accreditation. Before that, there is no connection, uh, direct connection or leg, uh, formal connection between uh, accreditation and the professional society. So, uh, so uh, jump, uh, PII jump to prepare uh, uh, the EIB in 2013, and then uh, to, to, uh, with the help of uh, JABI and JICA, and also with the help of the, our government, of course, uh, we established it in 2015. And uh, PII seriously took this, uh, uh, handled this opportunity uh, to so the uh, PII built a spe uh, set up a special permanent body inside the institution of engineers Indian Indonesia. So I'm going to, to explain it with this uh, uh, caricature of this uh, this uh, picture. So this is the engineering campuses in Indonesia. So before this uh, verse, uh, there are uh, professional engineers' roles is uh, is mostly a personal approach, mostly not uh, very very clear. Some uh, pro professional engineers are invited in giving lectures, reviewing uh, their curriculums, but this is a personal approach again. And there, is also, there are also some program associations which have big, bigger role in uh, shaping this engineering campus because they are approached uh, formally by the program. So their main role are uh, developing main discipline curriculum, for example, and there are a lot of discussion and consultants uh, forums established by this association, uh, uh, program association. So after this verse, through PII, uh, PII have more uh, roles and most uh, we, PII can do together setting up the discipline criteria and accreditation together with the program association, of course, and also with, with the people from the academicians. And there are also PII can develop a curriculum to several programs and we hope uh, that more uh, professional engineers are involved in accreditation uh, processes by uh, with this uh, uh, this uh, first. So we got a lot of supports uh, from different parts of uh, engineering stakeholders. For example, of course, from academics, we got uh, support from program association, and also from higher education institution associations, which is very. Uh, politically very strong uh, in Indonesia. And professionals also, uh, we have supported from chapters in PII. This, is, this has done never before because uh, chapters usually, as in the previous slide, they, are in, uh, they, are, they don't have any direct uh, linkage to the education program. So uh, leading engineering and higher education societies as well, they have, they have, a, lot, they have a lot, uh, they help a lot uh, us. And the government, of course, uh, from the previous uh, cabinet, Ministry of uh, Research and Technology and Higher Education, uh, and, for, for, and, and then changed to Ministry of Education. And I have explained also the, the lots of uh, uh, help from the JABI and JICA in the form of training, in the form of, uh, 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 has also already mentioned that uh, JABI helps us a lot in developing the criteria, uh, sharing the, their experiences, and with this help, we don't have to open the forest by ourselves, the jungle for by ourselves. By ourselves. So we also learn a lot from Abed. We send, with the help of our government and also from JICA, we send a lot of our uh, our staff to 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 the training program of the Abed, and we also visit, for example, China uh, Accreditation uh, China Association for Science and Technology and Board of Malay Engineer Malaysia and Engineering Australia, et cetera, et cetera. Thank you very much for all of the Washington Accord members uh, that are helping us in this uh, developing our EAB in the very first uh, stage.
And I would like to explain also a little bit about the accreditation culture in engineering education. Uh, those, uh, some of us, maybe some of you may, may be also aware already about the National Accreditation Council or BANPT. It was the, uh, established in 1994 by our government. So the, uh, two, two years later, they, this is an accreditation council for all the, for all the engineering, uh, for all the study programs, not only the engineering. In nine, two years later, they did, it, they did the first uh, accreditation uh, process for bachelor program. And uh, five years later, uh, they moved also to postgraduate program. So they basically they do the uh, master degree and uh, doctoral degree. And before it is the process of uh, accreditation was uh, was um, of, of, of voluntary, but then in 2003, the, our government changed it to compulsory. Uh, and uh, also the BANPT started to do the accreditation for institutional, not only the program. Then, uh, you know already the 2012 Act uh, on Higher Education, I just mentioned before. So with this, uh, YABI started with, uh, the establishment and uh, we, we got uh, the with the help of some of others, we have the professional status uh, just last year in June. But best, but actually, at the end of 1990s, there was a program by the by the World Bank called Q Project, uh, maybe Quality Undergraduate Project. It is. It has nothing to. It it might have. Uh, it might have nothing to do with the OBE. But this project has uh, has uh, because at that time. As mentioned by uh, by uh, uh, by uh, Mr. Ausima San, uh, Abed started to start the the OBE, and uh, at this time, many of us, by, by the help of the Quality Undergraduate Project, started to to look at the, this OBE uh, process, and some leading programs embrace this international uh, international accreditation. Uh, for example, Abed, Jabi. I came from you uh, from chemical engineering in the UK, and also non institution non accreditation institute, but institution, but it, it helps develop the uh, accreditation system in Indonesia as well, uh, Asian University Network, etc. So, our journey so far, uh, we as mentioned before, we establishment, we develop a lot of our committee, uh, they, uh, we started to to do the first accreditation in 2016, and now. Uh, I'm going to. Okay, I, we are creating uh, some some study project, and with uh, this 2020, we hope that there will there is a there is a, a verification system. But uh, as Professor Osima uh, Sam mentioned, that it is uh, postponed to 2022. So we learned a lot in the beginning that previous uh, that from previous uh, accreditation system, we have exper many experiences from our national one and also from abroad, from the ABED, etc. So many ideas in the beginning came in, uh, in, common, in context, common criteria that uh, set, set up our building. But uh, finally, with the ben benchmarking uh, can be very, very helpful. So uh, not many programs in the beginning were interested to join, uh, to, to join uh, IABI because some of them have already got the international accreditation. Those who, uh, who we are, we actually expected to embrace us, but they, they said, uh, why? We, we have already international accreditation one. But then uh, new th uh, also we have a problem with the industrial practitioners uh, that we, we would like to have to be the evaluators. They, not many of them be, are interested to do this because this is a voluntary uh, uh, works. And then, of course, after some work, uh, the null and bold, the, 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 the system works, then everything comes smoothly with the help of uh, many parties in Indonesia, and also from uh, Jabi and Abed, etc. Uh, this is the, our, this is our uh, uh, organization stru structure. Basically, we would like to have a subcommittee uh, we have already uh, established the subcommittee for Washington Accord, and we are now developing the subcommittee for Solar Accord for those for uh, computer uh, and, and uh, computer and information. So uh, we also have uh, appeal board. So uh, this year, uh, this is we are experienced 
to function the, this appeal uh, board. Before the, fir the first uh, three, two year, uh, three years, we, we don't have to do this, but this at the, the, the last, at this, this, at this the last year, uh, there was, we have to function this one. And so far it works very well. Okay, uh, so we have a, uh, four uh, common criteria for accreditation. First is uh, how we set up the autonomous profile, professional profile or PEO, and also uh, ABP uh, publicly and review system and program learning system, or uh, learning outcome, sorry. And then the second one, which is uh, the, uh, with, with the design of the learning, uh, learning implementation, we, we have to set up the curriculum and syllabus, faculty, this is basically what we, we uh, set up the criteria. And also the, the third criteria is how to learning outcomes assessment. And the fourth one is by using PDCA approach. This is the continual improvement uh, of the, of the uh, education, uh, engineering education system. So, um, yeah. Well, we have developed discipline criteria from several, uh, uh, from with, with uh, several high, high, higher engineering uh, associations and also from the chambers of the PII. For example, here, agri agro agriculture and biosystem, chemical, those have uh, separate uh, discipline criteria developed by, by the, the society. So these are some important numbers that we have here. Uh, this is, uh, we have, yeah, if you, if you uh, remember that we have a lot of uh, programs that, uh, that should be accredited, but only, not, not all of them have been accredited. Uh, only these numbers have been accredited. Some got A, uh, uh, B, and the rest got uh, on, on C. Now the system has changed, but then we still, uh, we, we also have, uh, we, we are, we are uh, uh, targeting at these uh, programs who, who are eligible for EIB general accreditation. And we also uh, train some uh, program evaluators. Now we have a pool of 117 program evaluators. And this has been uh, developed since 2015, of course. And then this is, uh, this is the number of programs applying for EIB. 2019 is uh, about 40. Now we have about 60. So I'm going to, so this is our uh, criteria, uh, suitable fit to the, to, the, to the IEA, as mentioned by Osin Masang before. So this is the relation, and we have set up also the rules and procedures for evaluation and accreditation, as well as rules and procedures for accreditation related uh, committees. Uh, so to, in order to be accredited, a program must satisfy the invitation criteria and the RPEA. So this all, those are available in our website. So there still, there are following up the, the comments from, made from, uh, from the IEA meeting, at Hong, in, in Hong Kong last year. Uh, so the, the, the IB, IB, uh, IB, uh, EIB criteria of learning outcomes should be, should be distinguishable of fitting the Washington Accord requirements, not uh, the Solo Accord or Dublin Accord, especially related to the ability to solve com uh, complex engineering problems. So with thanks to those uh, comment, and the previous uh, learning outcome criteria already has the requirements to apply knowledge and skill for complex pro problem solving, but then with the word complex uh, was not used. So we, the criteria have been amended to the, include explicitly the word complex in this statement. D, an ability to identify, formulate, analyze, and solve complex engineering. This, this will be very helpful to us as well. So this also, uh, by this, we are very, we are hoping that we are ready uh, to be verified by, by the Washington Accord. So uh, for example, uh, I'm very happy to, to to share this, uh, this uh, news that even during this very challenging time, um, about six, uh, 59 programs uh, have already applied for a general accreditation evaluation cycle in this year. So we, we have this, this uh, evaluation cycle. So I, before I end uh, my, my explanation, my uh, speech, I just want to see the, 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 the distribution of our uh, accreditation. So we, at this time, we only have this part of Indonesia. Uh, these are the numbers, these are the university's logos that I put up here. So mostly in, in, in Java, you can see here, but also one in uh, Aceh, 
and in the southern part of Sumatra, which is in uh, Srivijaya. And uh, we give benefit, uh, we hope that the programs will understand the benefit of doing the uh, accreditation, which is continual improvement, accountability of their program to the society, increasing their competitiveness to others, and the recognition of quality assurance alignment in achieving the criteria, international outcome-based education. And of course, uh, cost saving, because uh, as, uh, as Osima Sir also mentioned that, uh, professors are very reluctant to do the multiple accreditation. So for example, a national accreditation, uh, AUN accreditation, ABET accreditation and also other accreditation, for example. So by using this one system, one house system in PII, we don't have to do the multi-accreditation bodies in the future. So there are also benefits to the graduates, a student of quality engineering education in meeting the requirements to enter the professional engineering career, and also increasing their competitiveness to join the workforces, uh, whether it is national or multinational companies. And we know that it is already, the Washington record has been recognized by 21 countries. And also benefits to industries, we are embracing, we are trying to, to, uh, to, uh, to, to, sh to show it to the industries that provides opportunities for industry to guide the educational process to reflect the current and future needs and enhance the mobility of professionals. So we hope also that industries can utilize graduates with the same qualifications as graduates of other Washington record signatories for inside the country project or abroad. With this, I would like to thank you for your uh, time and for your uh, for attention. I'll give, uh, I return this to Mr. Moderator. Thank you very much. Okay, thank you very much, uh, Prof. Misri. I think uh, EAV is successful under you as the committee executive. Mm -hmm. And uh, you can say that, uh, according to your presentation, that EAV is ready to be verified. We do hope that uh, EAB will success next, uh, now and next. 